Hi, I'm Andrew with NVIDIA and you're watching GeForce Garage. Last episode, we installed our custom powder-coated copper tubing to our liquid cooling system, and it looks amazing. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna accentuate our build even further with some custom LED lighting. Today we have Bob Stewart in the house from bsmods.com, and he is a true expert at LED lighting. In fact, he's told me he's got some ninja ways to shine a light on our awesome build here. Hi, I'm Bob Stewart with BS Mods, and I'm here today to talk to you about LED lighting. When people think of LEDs, they think of the actual LED bulb like this. Technologies come a long way with different LED types, sizes, and colors. This is the single white strip in the 50-50. Those are nice if you just want a single color and just have something lit up nice and bright. So you can pick the waterproof type that has a silicone shield on it. Sometimes you'll see these, they're a little bit of a goldish brown color. The silicone does diffuse the light a little bit better than the non-waterproof. This is the 3528 RGB LED strip, non-waterproof. And as you can see, the different colors are on different chips. I've chosen the green color right now, but there's not as many LEDs per meter on the roll. It makes it not that bright. The 5050 tri-chip, meaning that all three colors, the red, green, and blue, all in one chip. So you get a lot wider color spectrum. For you can see that there's a huge difference between the two. A lot more LEDs per meter, and they are three times brighter than the 3528. This is the waterproof one, so it does diffuse the light a little bit better, gives you a little bit more of a glow, and some people do like that rather than the uh, pin dot look of the non-waterproof LEDs. And these can be changed to different colors, so a 50-50 is really the best way to go in a PC case. A lot brighter. You can always dim it down if you need to with a controller, but you're pretty much stuck with that amount of brightness if you get the 3528s. I'm going to show you some of the supplies and tools that you might need during a typical installation of LED lighting. Starting with some shears. It's a good thing to have shears that can cut tubing or wiring and things like that. And then also small snips too to get in really tight if you need to. Then you'll need some strippers. These are your basic strippers. These also have cutting blades and these are for crimping too. So it's a multi-purpose tool. Then you're gonna need some wire and you have your black and red, which is standard for positive and negative. Just wanna use a fairly small gauge maybe like an 18. To connect the wiring, you're gonna need some connectors. These are a Molex four pin connector and you can either make your own with some pins and connector housings, or you can just use one that is pre-made, just pick some up at a store. And also a pin removal tool, very useful if you are taking a set of connectors that are already pre-made, you can use this to pop these out and then do your wiring with it. If you're gonna wanna protect the raw wire, so you're gonna wanna use some shrink tubing, it comes in various sizes and colors, and a heat gun to shrink that tubing down. If you are installing your light strips and you wanna make sure that it doesn't come down, you may want to use a hot glue gun or you can use double stick tape. It comes in different ratings. We recommend this heavier duty tape where you can get it in clear or typical gray. Then when you run your wiring, you wanna make sure that you grommet your holes and there are several sizes. So you're gonna to wanna to get a grommet that's the right size for the hole that you drill. It's very important to protect your wires from the sharp edges. Once everything's all connected, you can choose to either wire it straight up to your power supply or you may choose to wire it up to a switch where you can control it and have on and off. When you decide which one you wanna use, you need to connect it somehow. So you need to have a control box and this has a plug-in on one end for the power and a plug-in for the LED strip on the other end. This will allow you to control the lighting and there are different types of controllers. You can use a simple little inline controller that will do basic functions or you can move up to the infrared controllers and you can choose a lot of different colors with that. And if you want to go all the way up to the very best, you can get a larger 44 key controller and there are a lot of DIY functions on here so that you can pre-program it, things like that. For powering it all up, you'll need to get a connector that plugs into the control box. So this would just control the power going in and then you would need to wire up a Molex connector if you wanna run it straight off of the power supply. Rather than do that, if you're wanting to just wire it in to a set of wires, you can purchase one of these little connectors here, plug that in, and now you have a power connection to the control box. You can get control boxes with more than one lead for the LED so that you can have two different strips and these just plug in with pins that are on the ends of the LED strips so when you plug those in your lights will 
turn on, and then uh, you can use your controller to change colors, things like that. So Andy, that's basically how LED lighting works. That's amazing, that's a lot of stuff. So of all those things you just explained, how are we gonna install some of that in our, our system here? Well, for starters, what I'll do is I'll light up the GPUs and the water blocks with the single color white LED strips. So we'll have one light strip right underneath each GPU. It'll shine the light up through, and this whole thing will glow white. Awesome. What we'll do for the top part of the desk is use the 16-foot uh, RGB kit with the remote controller so that we can pick and choose what color we want, if we want it to fade or flash, all kinds of different functions. And then we'll also use that on the bottom of the desk so that it shines down onto the floor and gives it a nice glow too. So the RGB strip can do pretty much any color, so we could have like a rave party in here pretty much. Yeah, absolutely, just with the push of a button. Wow, that's awesome. So I'm gonna install the under cabinet lighting. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that it works before you install it. I've got power to my power supply. I'm gonna plug in the Molex connector that's plugged into the control box. And then I wanna make sure that I uh, plug the control box in with the correct polarity. All right, looks like we have a working unit. Then we wanna go ahead and test the uh, remote control. Make sure that that works correctly. So there's off, back on, go through the red, green, and blue. Looks like everything's a go. Next thing we want to do is prep the control box for the location. So we've got our sticky tape and we're going to cut a piece to stick to the back side of it. So one thing you want to consider too is where the IR is going to be because you'll need line of sight between your remote control and that. And I've determined where the best mounting location is going to be, it's sort of close to the power supply. We're just going to run the LED strip the length of the bottom of the desk here. Okay, so about that much. Snip that off. So these strips have a peel and stick 3M adhesive back, so you can peel that off. And you want to make sure the surface is clean. It's probably good to work in a small section at a time. You want to press it in really good. So this is a textured surface on this desk, so I do feel that we probably need to add the tape because I can pull this down pretty easy. So we'll add the tape, re-adhere it, and uh, it'll be locked in place for good. So I've got to plug the power in to the power supply and then also plug the uh, LED strip into the control box wiring. And there we go. And then we can either put a piece of shrink tube on your connector to make sure it doesn't come loose or a piece of electrical tape is fine. Just want to make sure that doesn't pop loose. And then again, make sure that you have your receiver eye still showing. Okay. Test it again. Green. Works. Pretty awesome. All right, Bob, so after seven days and seven nights, everything's installed and you're ready to say, let there be light. Yep. All right, let's do it. Ready to go? Let's see this okay. baby in action. Let's try it. There, there we go. You're the man. Sweet. Thanks for coming in and helping hey, us out. Yeah, You're truly the master. Me. I appreciate it. So last thing though, Bob. Yeah. You promised me party mode. I did promise party mode. Let's see Let's some see. party mode. Oh God, I hope it can, can deliver. Woo! Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Don't forget to check out our next episode, where we complete the Red Harbinger cross test with some snazzy vinyl decals. Thanks for watching GeForce Garage, the ultimate resource center for designing, building, and customizing your GTX PC.